Hello and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Season 1, Episode 5, Simbatsu Team Selection. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. This week I had the special honor of interviewing Edwin Dizen from the Coco Yaku blog about the selection process for the upcoming Simbatsu Koshian High School Tournament in March. Without any further ado, on to the interview. Hi, Edwin. Oh. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. And uh, the reason I have you here, of course, is to um, kind of get an idea of what's going on with the upcoming Simbatsu, um, the Spring Invitational. Okay. Um, as uh, most people who follow high school baseball understand, the spring and summer tournaments um, are national uh, high school baseball tournaments. The spring one is an invitational. And it has long been a mystery to me how it is that the decision comes about on who the teams will be s selected for the spring tournament. So can you try to explain it to uh, the people outside of Japan who might not follow high school baseball nearly as closely as you do? Okay, sure. So basically what happens is, unlike the Natsu Koshien or the Summer Koshien tournament, where you have teams qualifying out of their prefecture, what happens in the fall is that you still have your prefectural tournaments, but then after that you have a couple of teams from each prefecture then qualify for a super regional. And there are actually ten super regions in all. Hokkaido, Tohoku, um, Kanto outside of Tokyo, Tokyo, Hokushinetsu, uh, Tokai, Kinki, Chugoku, Shikoku, and Kyushu. Mm -hmm. and, and then, in these fall tournaments, one thing I was curious about is, do seniors play? In this case, no. The seniors don't play. So really all you have playing are your uh, first years and second years. So when you hear about the, the uh, saying that you know, for the seniors in the summer tournament or the Natsukoshin, the summer is over, it literally is. They don't participate in the following uh, fall taikai. It's left to their, um, their uh, kohais to basically qualify the team for the upcoming senbatsu. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and of course, this is because in Japan, school is out in March, and the tournament um, is generally um, right then during the break between the um, school years. That's correct. Um, in this case here, it's March 22nd, but it can be as, I believe, as I, I think it's all in March, but yeah, it's usually done right after um, school is out, so that's part. That's the reason why they don't end up participating. Mm -hmm. So you have the regional tournaments going on, and is it just the champion of the regional tournament who gets invited to the spring? Um, actually, there's um, each super region actually gets a, a certain amount of bids. So um, if you talk about the base number of teams, there's 32 in all in normal in regular years. Um, mm -hmm. Hokkaido gets one, uh, Tohoku gets two, Kanto gets four, uh, Tokyo gets one, uh, the Hokushinetsu and Tokai regions get two each, um, the Kinki region gets six, um, Chugoku, Shikoku also get two, and then Kyushu gets four. Um, those are your base bids, and then there are two floating bids that exist. Um, one of them is between the Kanto and Tokyo region, so the committee can choose an extra team from one of those two areas, and the other one is Chugoku and Shikoku, where again the committee can select an, one extra team from either of those two super regionals. Okay, um, how about the 21st century um, slot? Right, so the 21st century bids are usually, what happens there is that um, 
each prefecture will nominate a team that um, did not make it to, I believe, the selection area. Um, you, they can still make the super regionals, but they can't necessarily have gone too deep in the super regionals. Um, okay. And they'll nominate a team usually based upon some merit that they've done outside of baseball, or in some cases maybe it is involving baseball, like for instance in this particular year, um, Iwaki Kaisei out of Fukushima, you know, they continued playing on their grounds after the tsunami hit, etc. Yeah. So there is something there is something that might be still be baseball related, but usually you'll hear things about helping out in the community or mm -hmm. things like that. From those uh, prefectural nominations, then there will be a team that's selected uh, to uh, for each particular super region. And then from there, um, what I've actually found recently um, in, for this particular in this particular case is that I believe the the selection committee will select a team from the Higashi Nihon region, a team from mm -hmm. the Nishi Nihon region, and then basically a wild card that they can select out of the um, super uh, region super regional candidates that were selected. Oh, okay. um, so in a normal year, there would be three teams that would be selected for 21st century teams. Mm -hmm. And this year is special in what way? Uh, this year is special in the fact that this is an, um, I guess what you could call a multiple of five year. Okay. And that is where in um, in the in, this is the 85th tournament, and so as a result, what the committee does is that they actually expand the field. In this case, from 32 to 36 teams. Uh -huh. um, is, so outside of the base 32, which I, as mentioned has the base bids, the floating bids, the 21st century bids, and I will probably get into later. We'll talk about the Meiji Jingu bid as well. Those are the okay. base ones. The committee has decided to add um, an extra bid for Tohoku and what they call the Tohoku Memorial bid, probably again because of the great Tohoku earthquake that happened yes. in 2011. Um, Tokai was awarded another bid. Um, Chugoku and Shikoku, instead of having a floating bid, they were each awarded their own team, so each region got three. And then they added in another um, wild card bid for the 21st century team, and so there's four 21st century teams this year. So um, you mentioned uh, the Meiji Jingu tournament, and th this is another part of the whole selection process that has often um, confused me because. I, it seems like if you've won your Super Regional and you go on to the Meiji Jingu Tournament, you're already, well, most likely, have a spot in the Simbatsu. That's correct. But um, with the, So what are you then competing for at Meiji Jingu? So he, this was actually, again, another thing that I had re to research for, and I wondered why necessarily they had this tournament and what it, what significance it had. It turns out that the Meiji Jingu tournament is where all the super regional winners go down to Tokyo, play at Meiji Jingu Stadium, mm -hmm. um, in a in another single elimination tournament. It turns out that the winner of the Meiji Jingu bid actually earns their prefect or their their super region. I'm sorry, the uh, Meiji Jingu bid. So there's an extra bid that goes out to the super region that wins the Meiji Jingu tournament. Okay. Um, in, in this case, because Sendai Ikue um, out of Tohoku won the Meiji Jingu tournament, mm -hmm. so that Meiji Jingu bid goes to the Tohoku region. So that means they have four base bids. The oh. two that they normally got, the one okay. Tohoku Memorial bid, and now the Meiji Jingu bid. So there's now four teams that are guaranteed to come out of Tohoku. Uh huh. That finally starts to make a lot of sense. So basically, they're playing for their little brothers in the uh, neighboring regions. Pretty much. I mean, if you're one of the teams that may be on the fringes. Or mm -hmm. perhaps, you know, even if you're in Kanto where you have the floating bid, there's no guarantee that you're going to end up, that the selection committee is going to come go to your, you know, super region. So by your champion winning it outright, it improves your chance of possibly getting selected. Okay. And just by going to Meiji Jingu, are you guaranteed a slot at Simbatsu? I would probably have to say yes. I've never seen a case where a super regional champion has not been selected. Um, okay. 
usually, and if it's a multiple bid um, super region, usually at least the, um, the champion and the runner up both end up going. It's where you get to the certain regions such as the kinky region for instance where there's six bids mm -hmm. and especially in the Kyushu region where there's four bids that you have the selection committee possibly picking somebody else that's not for instance like in Kyushu the are four so you'd think mm -hmm. you'd select all four uh, semi-finalists right? That's right. four teams. Makes sense. But there have been some cases in which a team has made the semifinals and yet has been passed over by the committee for a team that lost in the quarterfinals. Okay, so there is still more consideration being done than just how a, a team of freshmen and juniors, um, for those who don't know, there are only three years of high school here, um, do in the fall season. Right. Um, I think one of the biggest teams that seems to have been snubbed repeatedly over the last couple of years has actually been Ichinoseki Gakuin out of the Tohoku region. For some reason, they have been passed up at least twice um, mm -hmm. for, uh, for Senbatsu. I think they did manage to get selected once, but it, it, when I was in my initial uh, research to try to figure out how a team makes it, um, it was odd to me that a team would get passed over, but again, this is an invitational tournament, so right. um, you know, obviously, there's got to be something that you know is outside of the expected of, you know, just inviting the top teams that finished in the tournament. Okay, and along those lines, Iwaki Kaisei was selected from Fukushima, and reading your blog, you seem pretty surprised by that. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely, and it, the reason why I was kind of surprised by Iwaki Kaisei making it is because Tohoku already had an extra bid um, in the uh, Tohoku Memorial bid that they awarded because of the 85th, you know, the multiple of five mm -hmm. uh, tournament expanding the field. Um, the Then they won another bid because uh, uh, Sendai Ikue won the... Uh, Meiji Jingu tournament, Meiji. and so they got a fourth bid to go along with that. That already seemed like quite a few bids already, and I didn't think that Iwaki Kaisei would make it, and especially also considering the fact that they did not advance out of the Fukushima Prefectural Tournament. So they didn't mm -hmm. even make it to the uh, Super Region. And so at least from the history that I've been, at least the most recent history, only one team has actually been selected um, to go, you know, who did not make the Super Regionals, who mm -hmm. actually made it to Koshien. So because of that, I kind of, because of that and the Tohoku already receiving four bids already, I didn't think Iwaki Kaisei would necessarily be selected. But it does seem like the committee this year decided to place a lot of emphasis on the Tohoku region because of the tsunami, because of the relief efforts. Um, you, you already did see that in the, you know, the Koshians right after the tsunami where right. they place a lot of emphasis. Even now they still do. So, mm -hmm. you know, in this case here with the 85th, with the 85th tournament and expanding the field, I guess they just try, decided to try to put in as many teams as possible, and so Iwaki Kaisei got in. Yeah, well, uh, today's Nikon Sports, which had the uh, total listings of all the schools, they had a full page dedicated to Iwase Kaisei, um, where it showed how the players basically um, use all kinds, recycle all kinds of different um, things from after the uh, devastation, uh, like fishing weights for... Um, helping to train. Um, they send fly balls up from their devastated grounds to the beach across the street um, in practice. So it's, it's certainly a human interest story, I think, but I don't know how far they're going to go in the tournament if uh, they really haven't shown that much uh, on the field. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to tell too, um, mostly because, you know, even with Iwaki Kaisei making it um, to the tournament, the fact that they didn't advance out of Fukushima, if um, if you look at past history of 
Fukushima Prefecture, mm-hmm. generally it's um, it's there's only one team that really ends up dominating the region. Uh, that being uh, uh, where is it? Uh, that being uh, Seiko Gakuin. I mean, they okay. basically represented Fukushima for years and years and years. I mean, <laughs> and you're talking about a span that dominates about as much as Chiba and uh, Wakayama does in Wakayama. So mm-hmm. the fact that perhaps the committee also thought, hey, we have another team from Fukushima who can actually we can actually send to Koshian. That's not, you know, uh, <laughs> Seiko Gakuin. You know, we might as well take that opportunity and uh, send that team along with uh, with Seiko to Koshian. So there's all there's also that too. Their chances probably don't look very good. They're probably a one and done team, but you know, because mm-hmm. it's a random draw for Senbatsu, who knows? They could they could still um, get, at least get past what, the first round. And uh, with that, um, I think uh, we uh, have covered much of the basics and a lot of the things that I think a lot of people who are just getting into Koshien have often wondered about the spring tournament. I know I have. So thank you very much, and I employ anybody who is interested in high school baseball to check out Diz and Son's blog at, um, let's see, what is that again? Uh, it's uh, Goro Shigeno. It's the main, main character from the manga Major. So goroshigeno.blogspot.com. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me. And thank you very uh, much for having see me. you around. All right, thank you very much. I right. take care. You too. Now it's time to pull out the pocket calendar. Coming up this week will be the second episode of the year for the Japan Baseball Weekly podcast with John and Jim on Monday, January 28th. Then, at long last, February 1st marks the first day of camp throughout the Southern Islands of Okinawa. Yes, the season is just about to begin. And with that, that wraps up this week's Pro Yaku Report. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.